Welcome back to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Jerusalem. We're joined again now by Michelle Warshawski. He's the author of On the Border. He's the founder of the Alternative Information Center in Jerusalem. Thanks for joining us. Hello. We've been talking about sort of the evolution of the uh, Israeli peace movement, which is more or less has fizzled out. There's a small group of activists that are very in, much uh, involved in solidarity actions with the Palestinians, but it's a pretty small segment of Israeli society. There's groups of Israeli soldiers, I think called refuseniks, again, pretty small. To what extent did, in terms of this evolution of a Israeli public opinion to being more overtly racist, the fact you can have a foreign minister, like Lieberman, who, you know, I, I would have thought 10 years ago would be almost unimaginable to have such a person representing Israel internationally. To what extent can you blame this on some of the tactics of the Palestinians? meaning terrorist attacks against civilians? You know, there, there have been almost no terrorist attack in the last six years. But it's still a factor because it exists as something of the present. Often I had to argue to say, when was the last bomb in Jerusalem? You don't remember even. But nevertheless, and this is part of, uh, of uh, uh, the official discourse and the official propaganda, always we are fighting terrorism, we are fighting terrorism, mixing a, a lot uh, with uh, personal security and a more global sense of security confronting the Muslim world, con confronting a clash of civilization. So the Palestinian uh, authority and the Palestinian police has been extremely efficient in uh, 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 stopping uh, any kind of uh, uh, military or terrorist confrontation with Israel it is still very influential in shaping the local public opinion. We are under a permanent threat of terrorism, and everything is done to keep this false impression, because we are not. Well, people will say well, the, the rockets from Gaza played the same kind of role, coming from uh, Hamas rockets and some of the jihadists. Yes, rockets. but this was really a, a construction. This was really a manipulation. These rockets, who care ever in Israel about Sderot? We have this concept in, in, in Hebrew, we are speaking about Israel and the other Israel. The other Israel is the Israel of the periphery, of the poor towns and villages in the south, especially in the south and in the north. The road is maybe the most extreme example of this no man's land of Israel. And suddenly everyone is taking care and, and, and suffering from, for the road. It's totally artificial. No one has been in the road ever, and no one had cared. The road has been under rockets since many, many years. The government didn't do anything about it, didn't speak almost an, uh, about it. When he decided to attack, to attack, and this was... Well, that's a bit my, my point in some ways, is that, is that the, uh, the rockets were actually, from any military sense, ineffective. Totally. Uh, but from a propaganda point, it was very good for the, exactly. for the Liebermans of Israel. This is why it was, uh, it's so stupid. And in fact, uh, 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 both Fatah uh, leadership and Hamas leadership were totally against it. The problem of Hamas in Gaza was one thing is to be against and one thing is to take measures to, to confront these small groups, quite isolated groups, and to be caught in between a criticism of, of the Palestinian Authority under the leadership of, Ham of Fatah for not doing anything and taking measures against those who are doing something, even if it is pathetic. This is a problem of the leadership of Hamas in Gaza. So they're trying to convince, but it's very hard for them really to confront it in, in, by military ways for their own public opinion. Ordinary Palestinians we've been talking to in some of the camps in Lebanon, a little bit in some other places, almost universally, especially younger people, are demanding more action. We want action. And in fact, one of the leaders of one of the organizations, uh, not primary leader, but in the leadership, he says sometimes we have to fire a rocket just because people are so angry at us for not doing anything. And we lose credibility in like the competition between Hamas and, and Fatah. And some, in fact, I think when, recently when the two uh, Israeli soldiers were killed in Gaza, there was a competition amongst who did, who did, who did. taking credit for it because they want to have, because people are so fed up with the, the non-peace process. It's true, and it's quite obvious that uh, uh, while the so-called peace process doesn't exist, 
and the talks are empty talks, and no positive move, even the most limited one on the ground, no, even no, uh, and the, the so-called illegal outposts, illegal from the Israeli legality point of view, no one has been dismantled. This is on the one hand. On the other hand, keeping the momentum, or the illusion of we are in the peace process is something which is, uh, uh, cannot last for a long time, in my opinion. And I think the new American administration, Barack Obama in particular, understands it. Something has to move. Otherwise, moderate leaders, so-called moderate leaders like uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas, and his administration, we lose totally any kind of credibility. They're close to being there And already. they are not far from it. To what extent have large sections of the Israeli public sort of bought into, internalized, the, the real racist outlook versus kind of just going politically passive? Because talking to people, you kind of get the sense that this kind of what used to be thought of on the right as racism, although some people have said it was always kind of there if you accept the basic concept of necessity for a Jewish state. There's an underlying racism there from the beginning. But the more hardcore right racism, is that broadly in the public now? Yeah, it is broadly in the, in the regular language, uh, in the mainstream media. Uh, ten years ago, uh, someone would have told me this is a kind of legitimate words in the parliament or in the newspapers. I say no, no way. For examples? The way Jamal Zahalka, a brilliant Israeli-Palestinian member of parliament, was treated in the television by one of the most famous Israeli journalists as a piece of shit, speaking to him in the television live as headmaster in the school. Go out, shut your mouth, during an interview and in the TV. This couldn't have happened 10 years ago in the mainstream television in the mainstream media. Now, there was a, a law, there was an attempt to pass, and I'm not sure where it ended up, that was going to say to uh, Palestinians living in Israel with Israeli citizenship, that you have to swear allegiance, more or less, to the Jewish state. You have to acknowledge there must be a Jewish state, or you could lose your rights as a citizen. Or at least your right, for example, not to be elected in the parliament. This is... Uh, and did they pass no, this? No, but it's uh, Lieberman. It's not uh, any more uh, uh, small uh, uh, lunatic right wing like uh, Kahane gang uh, tw 20 years ago. He, he's Minister of Foreign Affairs, his government, his party is part of the coalition, an important part of the coalition. So what we have is the blatantly racist language and measures that were on the margin of Israeli politics are now in the middle. They would like a law to, that says if you question that the state should be a Jewish state, that's essentially against the law. Do they want to apply that to Jews too? No, no. The dividing line, and we have to understand it, it's very uh, essential in the uh, whole conception of Zionism. Like my interrogators say to me, as a Jew. Which is why we can sit here and do this interview. Yes, and, and, and I can publish even in the mainstream media, not often, but from time to time, the most radical opinion, there will be no problem. No one will question my legitimacy. I will be considered crazy and lunatic, but not a traitor, not anymore. It was many, many decades ago the case. It's not anymore. It's part of freedom of expression. We have had a process of liberalization in the uh, uh, French sense of the term of the Israeli uh, uh, society. Much more freedom of speech. It was part of a change and has changed the, the Israeli society. The program of that government, in fact, it started with Barak, is to tell all of us, and first of all the Palestinians inside Israel, party is over. It's finished. We are back to the 50s, 60s. We are in a war. Peace was an illusion. We are in a war. And now everyone should uh, take it into consideration, including the institutions. A new, so there have been few new laws, but many, many laws propositions. Well, in the next segment of our interview, let's talk about the primary symbol of the new stage of the war, the wall. Please join us for the next segment of our interview with Michelle Warshawski on The Real News Network.